Well, hello there. What's up, dudes? Welcome back to Atlas Horizon. I am Steven Thomas, and today we're going to be going over some new hidden secrets inside of Hello Neighbor. And this is going to cover some things such as the location of your gravesite, where the neighbor actually buries you on the map. This is going to be also the location of the neighbor's evil twin brother. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's actually just a duplicate of him. But I think that would make for a really interesting plot twist if it turned out that there was a good twin and a bad twin with this. As well as we have a location of a sign and there's something on the sign that I think you guys will find really interesting. We also have the location of where the fair or the carnival is on the map itself and there's a generator. Uh, we may be able to find some other things while we're doing this little excursion, but we're gonna be using the floating bug glitch that's already been showcased before in order to find these things. So without further ado guys, we're going in. All right guys, so the first thing you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and go grab yourselves your binoculars and you need a trash can. You only need one trash can for this trick. We're running over to this wall side right here and there's an invisible wall I cannot go any further than this. What you want to do, back off just a little bit, go ahead and place the trash can down, and then you want to jump up on top of the trash can. Try to go near one of the edges of the trash can because this will actually make it go faster when you do this. It's super simple. All you have to do is crouch down, and then you crouch back up, or technically you're standing up, but you don't need to jump for this trick to work. So what we're doing, now we stand up, and you notice we are now glitching, and we're able to fly. By going towards the outer part of the trash can, you do move quite a bit faster with this. Otherwise, you'd be hitting that space bar all the day long. We're gonna go all the way up to the top. We're gonna go roughly one and a half, two times. A little bit higher, the better. And the neighbor is coming for us. So we're out of here. Guys, we reached a really good elevation with this. I think I actually went a little bit overboard. I just wanted to make sure that I was completely out of the sight of the neighbor himself. And by doing this trick at a certain point, it does put you enough distance away to where he will leave you alone. The music stopped. Now that we're at this elevation, what you want to do is you want to face the other side of the wall that we were looking at, which is in this direction. You want to grab the trash can and move forward, sprint forward at the same motion. That's why you only need one trash can with this. So if you did need to technically get back over the wall, you could do this same trick going the opposite way. And once we do this, we're just going to go ahead and grab this trash can and then move it and try and do it in the same motion. You gotta be pretty quick with this. So grab the trash can, running forward, straight motion. We technically just landed on top of the wall. As you notice, we stopped there just for a second and we are on the other side. Yay! Now we have all this area that we can go out and explore for ourselves. And we do have our binoculars right here. So we can go ahead and check out stuff as well. So let's move on to the next part. If you guys head over to this area here, you will see the neighbor's house. The original version when we start up the game is actually over there. So this is a duplicate. And what's really worth noting is in the beginning when you see the cinematic where the neighbor goes into the back and he comes out, there's a, a zoom in effect that you see with the camera. That's actually not the camera. That's the entire house itself. And what happens is, because there's no window inside there, when you're sitting inside your bedroom, this is the window that you see. And the viewpoint goes from right here all the way into that room. And we'll actually show you what this looks like because the house later on, after we do that cinematic, will be merged together with that house over there as well. And look at this cute little tiny car. It's so cute and tiny. It's fun sized like a circus car. Next thing I want to show you guys with this is actually this little tiny car. So in the opening cinematic scene, when the neighbor walks through that exit door, we see a car in the background and there's an accident that drops a tire off inside the center of the um, living room. And that's actually this car. Now, the reason why this car is so tiny is to create the illusion that it's off in a further distance. Something that I think is also really kind of cool is if you take a look at the inside of the car here, You'll notice that the speedometer is all the way maximum. The long part is actually on full blast. So technically, this car is driving as fast as it possibly can. And maybe that's why it caused the accident. Was it the neighbor's fault or was it the driver's fault? Who is the driver? Or where did the driver go? And also, in the opening sequence, when the neighbor sees our car roll up, there's nobody in the car. Why is it that it's empty? 
raises a whole nother set of questions. There's gonna be a lot of theories around this whole concept, guys. So be sure to let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments down below. Personally, I think it's really plausible that we were the ones driving the car and we had an accident and the neighbor that we have is either the person that we killed or it's the devil themselves and the devil had played his hand, hence why he was kind of wiping off his hands when he came through the exit door with everything that happened. And uh, yeah, so let's go check out the next thing. Our house is part of his house. They are fused together. So real quick, I do want to show you guys that yes, these are indeed fully clipped in together. This is the twin, the evil twin of our neighbor. And he's not moving, he's frozen. Maybe he's actually the good twin. If anything, I would think this is the good twin because the other one's the one that chases after us. And maybe he was frozen in time. Ooh, it could be portals. Go through the exit because this did seem like it went to a portal to another dimension. And this room here, for whatever reason, doesn't seem to have a floor, which I think is kind of funny. And uh, yeah, if we try to go upstairs, we do have the upstairs area, but it glitches in with our house. At, and we could go check some of the other rooms, but everything's very empty. We can even start to go up towards the third level, but not quite. It doesn't let us go inside there fully and see what's up there. It's just going to be empty rooms anyways. But yeah, so let's go ahead and go check out one of the next parts. The next thing I want to show you guys is actually going to be this sign right here. And something really interesting about this is the fact that it looks like a person with wings, or to be more specific, it looks like the identification of a fallen angel. And when you consider the layout of this world, you got all these houses that are sideways, there's no people around, we just have our neighbor, and the neighbor, it seems like he goes through a portal, or there's just something really odd about this entire situation. When you take into account the idea of a fallen angel. It also raises the question, is our neighbor the devil? Is this purgatory? Is this hell? Are we facing the crimes of something that we did? This is technically a suspense game or a horror game, however you want to label it in that sense. And this sign does play some sort of a role. The developers put it in for a very specific reason, and it raises a whole other set of questions. So I think we just came across something big with this. If you look on this mailbox, it says 1414. It's actually on every mailbox. And considering the fact that we just looked at the sign with the fallen angel and we take into account what this is, if you look up the Bible verse, there's actually in Job 1414, it says, if someone dies, will they live again? All the days of my hard service, I will wait for my renewal to come. So I think that that and that completely ties together and we are in some form of purgatory i think that's a very good indicator for this keep that in mind let me know your guys' thoughts and theories down below in the comments section but let's go check out the next part with this next part is you want to go all the way out to the end of this road here and you see this fence line go ahead and hop up on top of the fence Go all the way down the corner walk over to this side here and then underneath the map you can actually see this giant block what this block is, that's the space in which when we're inside that fair or the carnival and we're instructed to hide underneath the bed or inside that closet, it's built inside of this space. That way then the camera knows where to transition to in order to another space or another room, in essence, to be able to demonstrate this kind of stuff. But there's also something else that's really interesting as well. So I'm going to go ahead and jump off of this ledge here. And where we'll be looking over right over there is our neighbor's house. So our house will be directly in front of it. And we should see a couple interesting things underneath the map here. So let's go in three, two, one. Geronimo! Woo! Oh! And you guys just saw it. I'm going to go ahead and freeze frame that. And let's go ahead and take a look at what that was. If you look on the right hand side, you actually see a replica of the neighbor himself. And this is the model that's used in the cinematic cutscene. In the middle we have what appears to be a lawnmower. And most notably I would say is on the left hand side, the very far left hand side, you'll see a coffin. And this coffin is the one that we are buried in if the neighbor catches us, which is the actual completion of the alpha version for what's currently available with us. Next up, guys, I want to actually disprove one of the theories out there, which is about the purple light at night. You can kind of see it. We're technically right in front of our house right now. And the theory is that the purple light is in reference to a grave that might be behind our own house. But 
the grave when you actually jump off in the previous demonstration that I did that the neighbor buries you in is over inside of his yard and it's going to be right about in that side of that area there. So if we head on back towards the back part of this house, of our house, sorry, you notice everything starts to get more and more purple. That's just a graphical bug. It's not actually a reference to anything in particular of like where a body may be buried or anything like that. Because uh, we did actually look underneath the map itself and there's nothing put down there. Also take into account, I'm over in the neighbor's house area right now. That purple light that we see, the exact same thing starts to happen if we head over towards the back part of his house. It has the purple glow. It's not quite as bright as we saw it over in our house. But it definitely has that purple tinge to everything that, that we see over here. Another big reason why you have that color discrepancy is because you're getting near the edge of the invisible wall section. So the lighting itself is going to be more evenly distributed towards the actual center part of gameplay that you do. As you start going towards these outer parts, there is a discrepancy in the kind of light that you see. And you'll notice it's actually a bit brighter on the stuff that's further out than what it is that's actually closer towards the houses themselves. So the last glitch that I'm going to show you guys in this episode is actually kind of a silly one. You want to go to the rifle range. And the area after you already completed this test of shooting the guys that are in the back there, go ahead and grab the key and you come behind here after you unlock that, you'll notice that there's this tube. Well, what happens if we place the key down? Woo! It gets sucked up and popped out here. But what else will work here? I have a board in my hand, the coffin lid actually. Let's try putting this down. Whoa! It became a splinter and it gave me a cork. And the board actually flew out through the side here. But can we go even bigger? That's the big question. Maybe the principal's been a very naughty, naughty lady. I think the missus uh, should go on a little vacation trip. Huh? You been a little naughty lady? Woo! <laughs> and it just spits her right on out. Oh boy. Shortest vacation trip ever. You get to go on it again. Whoa, whoa, she became super tiny. She was like a little toy. That's fun size. Anyways, guys, so that does it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, feel free to zap that share button. If you like the video, like the video. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. And I will see you guys later.